Welcome back onto the game on GH1 TV. Also live as always on Star FM. And like we always do, we're streaming also on X, formerly Twitter. So welcome back onto the show. Like I told you today, we're having a bit of a season review. A very long season has been from August through to just um, last week. I mean, this weekend, I should say, when a season came to an end in most of the European leagues. We still have the Champions League final, the Europa Cup final tomorrow, and also the Conference League finals were coming through next week. But let's get into it now. To help me review the season that we've seen just some few days ago come to an end is our good brother and friend with Sompa TV, Collins Ata Poku, a sports analyst and a lecturer as well. Collins, thank you very much for joining us via Zoom. And also, also via Zoom, we have, uh, of course, content prov provider or producer now on YouTube. And also, a uh, sports analyst also here in Accra, Kwame Amin Abafo. These two gentlemen will help us today to get into deep discussions on how the season pan turned out on the European front. Thanks, guys, for your time with us on the show. And how are you guys doing anyway? Uh, before we get into the questions, how are you guys generally doing? Kwame and... Uh, well, like I said, I'm hugely terrific. I'm hugely terrific. Nice one, nice one, nice one. Okay, Atta, let's right. get into it now. Um, straight away, if I'm, I, I ask you to describe how the season turned out for you from where you sit, what would be the best description you would give the season that just came to an end, especially in the English Premier League? I'd say it was a fantastic season. Hmm. Everything that you needed in the season, you found it. The only downside probably would be the relegation that actually came in way too early. I mean, it was settled way too quickly that Burnley, Sheffield, and Luton, the three that were promoted were going back. But in the middle and another top, there was drama, there was passion, there was intensity, there was success, there was disappointment. It's the entire thing that comes with the whole package. So I would say it was a fantastic season. Oh, nice one. Fantastic season, he says. Kwame, how about you? Would you to a similar line of thought of uh, Atapuku Collins? Well, I, I would say it was predictable. I mean, especially at the top. Mm. We all knew Manchester City were going to win the league. Um, teams were half and puff. Liverpool have done it twice. Um, Arsenal tasted it last season, and they've gone again this season. Okay. And they've, they've, they've had a taste of what Liverpool have had. The last time United even came close to competing with Manchester City, the points gap was so huge. So far, it's been Liverpool and Arsenal that have been able to, I mean, give them a close contest. But um, Pep Guardiola is succeeding in turning the league into a farmer's league, um, as we've, we've touted other leagues. You know, mm. uh, we've seen other leagues where you had um, Bayern Munich, I mean, winning it for a very long time in Germany. Uh, we've seen PSG winning it, and we've been, we, the, the fans of the English Premier League have been touting them as fans as we and Pep Guardiola is properly, properly doing that. Six over, it is seven, six over seven, mm -hmm. six over eight so mm -hmm. far for him. And I mean, there is nothing you can, but uh, the other, the other sports, I mean, there, is, there were some, a few bits of, a few bit of surprises here. Um, Aston Villa getting themselves into the Champions League spot. For two seasons, we've had outliers, I mean, break into the top four. Last season was Newcastle. This season is Aston Villa. Uh, disappointing season for some clubs, especially Manchester United. Um, after getting third last season, they would have expected that, okay, you push on. I mean, if you can't maintain anything, maintain your top four spots. But okay. it's been a very disappointing season for them. Chelsea also continue with their project, made some very last serious incursion to get themselves into European football spots. So uh, the relegation, yes, there was a bit of fight, but... It was determined way too early, hmm. like Atta rightly said. Okay. Uh, at, the, at the end, there were some points deductions to Everton, to um, um, to Everton, to Nottingham Forest, that you felt clubs like Luton and Burnley could take advantage. But unfortunately, um, they, they, they they proved to us that they, they they didn't have what it takes to you know maintain themselves in the league, the quality and everything that you'd expect. So, I mean, so it was generally a very good season. The Premier League will always deliver. Always, always will deliver. So it was great. It was a great season. Awesome. <laughs> uh, let's run into the battles for the key positions this season. City have defended the title they won a year ago. In fact, they've made, they've made it four in a row. We had Arsenal keeping the chase on to the very last day. 
Liverpool were involved at the point, but dropped out eventually. I thought you were team Liverpool. What really happened with the title challenge of Klopp and his men? And then let's look at the overall title challenge between the three teams, Liverpool, City, and Arsenal, how they ended up with still winning eventually the, the medal, if you like, or the trophy last Sunday. Well, Ben, uh, let, let's say that Liverpool start wasn't the most vintage start. And then they actually came into contention when Salah went away. So you look at Liverpool and it was all about what they did between December and March. Okay. From that period, they played way above their abilities. Where they were bringing in these players from the academy to come and play and they were getting results. They had key players out for long period. They started the season with Joel Matip. He got injured for the rest of the season. He was not going to play. Trent stayed out for almost three months. Alisson stayed out for three months or more. Diogo Jota, same. Salah ended up staying out for about two months when you put Afcon in there. So what they were doing was not sustainable. But when it got to the peak period from the spring onwards, where Manchester City comes to life, Liverpool have had these players back, but they were not informed. And it actually went against them. Okay. Again, they were overrated after what happened in the Carabao Cup against Chelsea. Many people thought that Liverpool could actually go on and do it all because they were in for the quadruple. But reality hit them when it was needed most. Okay. In that game against Atalanta, in that game against Crystal Palace and Everton, and then Manchester United, where you could see that they lack the firepower do what they used to do in the past. Liverpool had the chance to take out Manchester City in the Premier League and extend the gap to five points. They couldn't do it. I don't feel. Mm. They outplayed Manchester City and wasted their chances. They did the same against Arsenal at Anfield. They went to Manchester United in a game they should have actually killed it, like, quickly. They couldn't. And they looked that killer instinct for contenders, and it was always going to be Arsenal and Manchester City after they lost that game to Crystal Palace at Anfield. So Liverpool, like we say, actually found their level okay. as the season wore on, that they were in transition at the beginning of the season, okay. and that is exactly who they were mm -hmm. going into the end of the season, and that we shouldn't let what happened between December and March push us out into thinking that they were ready to contend for the title. So, so in reality, it was a case of the real level Liverpool were coming to bear eventually in the, in the course of the season. Absolutely. N not many people even gave them the chance to be competing for the title. They lost eight players and then decided to replace them. They have a new midfield and they played without key men for a long period. Atta, if you can rotate your screen a bit for me. Rotate the screen. Great. Nice one. Nice one. Go ahead, please. But like they, they, they lost key men. The people that they built their team around, they lost them. Okay. You take the number of games Jarrell Fonsa played for Liverpool this season. Ordinarily, it wouldn't happen if Konati was fully fit throughout the season and Joao Matip was available. So it, it's, it's always been like that. But I, I'm, I'm, I'm optimistic that we, ultra, we actually looked at Liverpool when they played against Chelsea and that run of form they had. And Salah went to Afcon and got injured. And we thought that, oh, now they are contenders. Then you, you wouldn't be. Look, Ederson is out. Ortega comes in and he saves Manchester City. So they, they have depth you don't have. And that showed throughout. And it came to the fall when Liverpool did that is the most. They shouldn't be disappointed at all because you don't go into a season like this when you have missed out on Europe. You have a trophy and then you are in the top four back in the Champions League. And you are disappointed. The disappointment is that they thought they had led the league and they were in a position where they could win. No. It has always been demonstrated that in the spring period from March to May, Manchester City mostly find their mojo. Mm. And unless you have a big gap on them, they would always find a way to rein you in and then overhaul you. Let me bring in Kwame as well. Kwame, what was the biggest determining factor in getting City to win the trophy over Arsenal and Liverpool this season? 
It's the usual thing. It's experience and okay. the mentality of the team. Um, okay. Ever since Pep Guardiola came in, I mean, he when when they play their season, there are moments where they have those patches where you feel okay, they are faltering, and 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 as a result of that, you think you might take advantage. Um, if you falter with them at that point, when it gets to the final stretch, they will always beat you to it, and that's exactly what they did, and that's exactly how Pep Guardiola's team has been, you know, you know, winning the league. Uh, when, when you think that, and, and you check the the last ten games, I think it was consecutive wins for them, and you, there is this statistics that's out there over the last ten games of the season from the point where he's been winning the league, and you would always see it, just one draw, one loss here and then, and then. There is a lot more wins. And it's, it's a thing that champions do. And I remember fights very well. Say Alex Ferguson used to talk about what he does every January after the season, after the team has completed that, 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 that long stretch in December. Says he sits down, he plots exactly what they are going to do, games that they are going to win, how they are going to win those games. And, and I'm not surprised that a man who was able to win the league 13 times has another man who's won it six out of eight times. I won't be surprised you also have that same mentality. I mean, that final stretch has always been important. And, and they know how to do it, and they've been able to master it. And, and that's exactly what they did to us now. The only way to win the league against Pep Guardiola is to do it the way Liverpool did it in, that, um, in the year Liverpool won the league. Give them a gap that would be very difficult for them to catch up. Liverpool had a plan. And they were able to, you know, stretch that league. So even while they falter, while they have these inconsistent results at the end, and while Pep's team keeps winning at the end, it will be very difficult to catch up. And, and that's exactly how you win the league against Pep Guardiola. So I'm not surprised. It's just the mentality. It's, mm. it's something that they condition themselves to do over the period. And mm. it's, it seems very well that it's working for them. Ata, 